able them enable their employees to access financial products and services as an employee benefit. Our goal is to allow these financial products and services to really empower the largest number of employees as possible, to really transform as many lives as possible. You may have heard Gil mention a quiet revolution. So this is something that we've really observed working closely with our HR partners. This quiet revolution is really in employee behavior. So it's really interesting because employees are seeking out more affordable and convenient and you know safer, more reliable financial solutions. And instead of actually going and availing of them directly as individuals, the shift is really towards these employees showing a preference for accessing these products as a benefit through their companies. So the salary link really makes it a lot more convenient and safer for them versus them going straight to a provider and accessing these services as individuals, right? Just some numbers to show you that this, what the shift is that's taking place. We surveyed 10,000 employees at the end of 2020 to get their pulse and understand, you know, what it was that their concerns are and what their preferences are. And at this point, 90% of these 10,000 employees really were staunch in their preference to pay for financial products through salary deductions. And today, in 2022, based on the borrower data that we have, that our customers have shared with us, 82% of employees are now able to access financial products through salary deduction. So it's really exciting. And that preference is really shown in how our customer base has doubled over the past two years. This pan the pandemic has really accelerated this trend. To give you more detail on that, I want to introduce you to our founder and CEO, Liam Grealish. He's, he inspires us every day to transform lives. He's been doing it his whole life, actually. He spent a decade with the IFC, where he has established or helped establish national credit registries throughout Southeast Asia. And even before that, he created and implemented a solar financing program that helped bring electricity to neighborhoods um, that were really underdeveloped in third world countries around the world. So I'd like Liam to tell you more about who we are and what we do in further detail. Here he is, Mr. Liam Grealish. Thank you so much, Jen, for that, uh, for that kind introduction and to Gil as well. Um, can we go to the next slide? Um, so what I what I really wanted to do for everyone today is really talk through in more detail what Jen just mentioned around uh, a quiet revolution and, and evolution in, in how employee benefits and financial services have really come together <clears throat> during the pandemic. Before I do that, you know, just a, a, a few quick words about myself, uh, just in case anyone is wondering. Uh, I'm the, uh, the co-founder co and CEO of Savvy. I'm from the UK. Uh, originally, although I, I left the UK when I was 21, and unfortunately I'm no longer 21, so my accent sometimes uh, sounds Australian uh, because my wife is Australian <laughs> as well. And, and just as a, a small point, I'll add, which is uh, we had a, another baby uh, just last week. Um, so if I, if you, if you, if you hear me needing to run to the other room uh, during this press conference, it is to be dodging a question. So <laughs> because of the, the, the situation that we're in. <clears throat> um, what uh, I really wanted to talk uh, uh, today around is is um, uh, how employee benefits and financial services have really come together during the pandemic, as evidenced from um, you know you know what some of the data we'll be sharing today around savvy and, and sort of what we've seen. You know, underlying this 
this change and, and, uh, and revolution in, in, in what's happening in employee benefits is um, uh, what I would say is employers at the heart of it, really putting financial well-being at the heart of their benefits program for their employees and that being something that was really essential to them managing and, and getting through and now thriving um, uh, during the pandemic and in the post-lockdown world. And as, as partners to them, Uploan and now Savvy are uh, really evolving as well in terms of what we do, in terms of uh, rather than just um, uh, providing a very limited range of products, is really going in and looking at a range of, uh, of different financial service, services and a holistic approach to financial well-being, which includes uh, insurance products, particularly COVID insurance products as a response to the pandemic, you know, increased flexibility on different credit products, emergency credit products, and also putting at the heart of what we do, mental health support um, uh, to uh, employers and employees. Um, can you go to the next slide? Uh, you know, and as I mentioned, really what this means is that we've seen 100 of the top corporations and companies and employers in the Philippines um, really make this change. Um, in terms of how they deliver employee benefits. Um, you know, and we're, we're, we're mentioning here a small group of some of our employer partners, but uh, uh, there are many, many more uh, sort of out there. And, uh, you know, there's, there's the reasons why this has taken place, I think Jen spoke about earlier, but it's really because by providing financial services and other benefits via salary link, it really means you have the right level of control um, you know, the right level of security. Um, and it really means employees get much better financial services uh, than they otherwise would, which I think became essential to people um, during the pandemic. So, you know, taking a step back and just thinking about this evolution, um, prior to the pandemic, uh, the situation we had was there were uh, uh, what I would say is vulnerabilities within the workforce that were then exacerbated by the pandemic later. Going into the pandemic, what we found uh, as savvy was that, uh, you know, employees was, were already uh, suffering from mental health issues and really struggling with those. Um, uh, we were finding that those in the workplace were really the breadwinners in the family. They were really the people who had a large number of dependents, 42% of our customer base uh, were supporting three to five people as dependents. People were really struggling to uh, be able to, to save some of their salary. And a large uh, percentage, uh, or almost a third of employees were falling victim, victims to informal and uh, predatory lending practices, uh, which were, for, for the companies, causing big problems on productivity. You were finding employees were thinking about um, the financial problems at work on a regular basis. Um, people were becoming financially stressed and this meant they were having to borrow from the company, um, you know, because a, a very, very uh, small percentage were able to, to go to banks uh, within the economy and, and be able to um, be able to uh, be a customer of a bank, uh, uh, less than 3%. Um, you know, in the pre-pandemic world, we were, we were meeting that, that need um, by really helping employees better manage their salary, uh, their, better manage their take-home pay, making sure there was a very healthy debt-to-income ratio. Um, but with these vulnerabilities there, when the pandemic hit, they really got exacerbated. Um, and what you obviously saw was a big dislocation of people not being able to work or even come into work. Um, uh, you, you know, you saw, um, uh, you, you saw uh, employees uh, have more financial pressures because some of their people in their broader families were put out of work. Um, so those staying in work had more a call on their salaries, um, you know, and you had increased uh, medical expenses uh, for obvious reasons. Um, and, you know, what what ended up happening is, you know, through that is really we as a company took a look at what was happening and decided that we needed to evolve and really move on from uh, being sort of very limited in our scope to really taking, as I say, a holistic approach to financial well-being um, for employees and helping companies embed it at the heart of their employee benefits. Um, and so that meant building in COVID insurance for people and we ended up um, uh, originating over 660 billion uh, pesos of COVID insurance during the 
um, during the pandemic, focusing on on developing uh, uh, salary advances for people for short term needs where they were where they were struggling, as well as you know innovating with companies and developing new kinds of products, particularly helping people how they how they travel because obviously there was a reticence for people to travel on public transportation um, uh, during the pandemic, and that meant helping people with. Uh, sort of uh, purchase bicycles, people pay for vaccines, uh, these types of things. Um, you know, and, and now as we sort of move on to the, to the post-lockdown world, um, what we're seeing is that in this world, as we're seeing uh, uh, um, uh, what I would say is more voluntary dislocation, so you're seeing sort of the great resignation, you're seeing a um, uh, huge demand uh, from employees from, for, for further support on better health and, and, and financial assistance is employers are really betting financial services at the heart of employee benefits. And, 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 and for us, what that has meant is that uh, we have seen a doubling uh, in, the, in the pool of customers that we, that we work with um, during and after uh, the lockdowns. Um, you know, we've seen everything move to a digital process. It was a very, it was a sort of 90% digital before, but now sort of that has taken place. Uh, and as well as savvy, really investing and working with companies on how you boost the financial well-being. And, and as Jen alluded to earlier, what this really means is that, you know, the, the top employers in the, in the market are really embedding financial services into their, um, into their employee benefits. And what is happening is that you're seeing, uh, you know, 90% of employees plus preferring to pay for financial products via a salary deduction uh, as a way um, to uh, secure. It's more convenient and it gives everyone uh, more confidence. And, and as we, uh, is more than just take home pay. It really is an asset for you in terms of what you can use to move forward in life. And that's really what we as savvy with our employer partners hope to enable. So. I'll stop there and hand back to Jen, who's going to talk a bit more about some of our products.